Have you ever heard the phrase unequally yoked? Well, it comes from 2 Corinthians 6.14 in the King James Version. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Now, the New Living Translation says it this way. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? A yoke, as you can see here behind me, is a wooden bar that joins two oxen to each other and to the load that they pull. An unequally yoked team, like here, will have one stronger ox and one weaker, or maybe one's taller and one shorter. So the weaker or shorter ox would walk more slowly than the taller, stronger one, causing the load to go around in circles. When oxen are unequally yoked, they cannot perform the job assigned to them. Instead of working together, they'll find themselves at odds with one another. Now, when the Apostle Paul said this to the church at Corinth, he discouraged them from being in an unequal partnership with unbelievers because believers and unbelievers are opposites, just like light and darkness are opposites. They simply don't have anything in common, just as Christ has nothing in common with Belial, which is a Hebrew word meaning worthlessness in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Now here, Paul uses it to refer to Satan. So the idea is that the pagan, wicked, unbelieving world is governed by the principles of Satan and that Christians should be separate from that wicked world just as Christ was separate from all the methods, purposes, and plans of Satan. He had no participation in them. He formed no union with them. And so it should be with the followers of the one in relation to the followers of the other. Attempting to live a Christian life with a non-Christian will only cause us to go in circles just like these unequally yoked oxen lying here in the field. Now, the closest partnership in the Bible that one person can have with another is found in marriage. And this is how the passage is usually interpreted. God's plan for a man and a woman to become one flesh in Genesis 2 verse 24. This is a relationship so intimate that literally and figuratively it becomes a part of the other. Uniting a believer with an unbeliever is essentially trying to unite opposites, which makes for a very difficult marriage. The Bible teaching here doesn't only apply to believers marrying unbelievers. As believers, we ultimately all believe Jesus is the Son of God and God. We are all about our Father's agenda, and this is what unifies us. However, just being a Christian doesn't mean our values, belief systems, cores, career paths, uh, family backgrounds, and ambitions are always going to be in sync. So by now you might be saying, well, Pastor Mike, what does this have to do with me? Because in our marriage, we're both Christians. Well, what I said, it matters. Because so many marriages end in divorce because of trivial reasons. A couple will get married and begin to experience personality clash and compatibility issues. And many times this leads one to compromise for the other which can quickly lead to resentment, bitterness, and doubt, and eventually both partners will feel choked, suffocated, and misunderstood. Now, the enemy takes advantage of these emotions and causes an adversary which triggers past bitter experiences, and the couple just decides it'd be better to be without the other, and it directly leads to divorce. Here are two practical things for determining whether you and your partner are equally yoked. Engage in deep, meaningful conversation. Don't avoid the tough stuff. The value of conversation is highly underestimated. We have to ask the right questions and with intentionality. And second, pray consistently, faithfully, and be receptive to God's response. I can't overemphasize this. God reveals an awful lot to us during prayer. 
Ask Him to reveal certain things you may not feel comfortable asking, or ask Him to give you the wisdom and utterance to be vulnerable. Pray for transparency for both you and your partner. In an equally yoked relationship, you are unified in the physical, sexual relationship, but also in the spirit. It makes it easier for your purpose, decision-making, vision, conviction, and perspective to be aligned, despite your differences. Now, however, believers can become unequally yoked when one nurtures his or her relationship with God through worship, prayer, Bible reading, church attendance, etc. And if their partner isn't doing the same, one believer will become stronger than the other and may even begin to feel constricted or stifled. Now, again, I want you to take a lesson from this picture and be sure this is not a picture of the relationship that you're in now. God can help you change if both of you want change. God bless you. And my prayer is make sure you're plowing a straight line together as one.